and gentlemen, my name is Justin Chad Bright Up, and you're watching another epic, awesome, amazing episode of the Messianic Bible Observant Followers of Yahushua Amashiach. Today, we're going to find out why was Christmas illegal in the United States of America? Is it pagan? Is it legal? Where did it come from? We're going to find out today. For the sake of our tradition, we grieve the heart of God. For the sake of our tradition, His word is null and void. For the sake of our tradition, cause we like the smell of pine. For the sake of our tradition, it's Christmas time. Come out of her, my people. We gotta be a holy, separate, set apart people like Peter talked about in the new covenant right and the holy is calling you Come away. Jeremiah 51 44 through 45 and I will punish Bel in Babylon mixing. That's what Babylon means is mixing. And I will bring forth out of his mouth that which he has swallowed up. And the nations shall not flow together any more unto him. Ye the wall of Babylon mixing shall fall. My people go ye out of the midst of her and deliver ye every man his soul from the fierce anger of Yahweh. Babylon means mixing. Mixing paganism into the faith of the Holy Bible is forbidden by the Bible. Just like diver's clothes and diver's seeds. Diver's clothes are mixing the forbidden materials together, which is wool and flax. Some people believe it's mixing any kind of fabrics together. Also, diver's seeds is mixing plants together in the same field that are not supposed to be together. Plants are supposed to be in separate fields, according to the Bible. We're not supposed to mix. Mixing is bad, according to the Bible, when you're doing it in a way that the Bible forbids. Removing the pagan elements does not change the pagan origins of any holiday. Remove yourself from the holiday. Because it's not a holy day. It's a pagan festival. What is Babylon that we must come out of? From 119 Ministries video, Study of Nimrod, Genesis 10, 8 through 12. The cities of Nimrod that he created, apparently in the order he created them, and we can find them in the Bible. There's Babel, which means confusion or mixing. There's Erech, which is to lengthen, prolong, or to live with. There is a cad, which is subtle, going to be subtle now, from a fortress or to strengthen, okay? And then Kalna, fortress of Anu, many 50 plus false Elohim come from Anu. Nineveh means abode of Ninus. History says Ninus equals Nimrod. Then we have Nina is a fish in a house or a fish deity. Nina is a Babylonian name of Ishtar. Then there's Reboth Ir, wide paths or streets. We're making the narrow road into a wide road of destruction. Kela, completion or resilient strength. So now it's complete. The, the plan is complete. Risen, a bridle. A bridle is to control the people, to control the horse. So what does this mean? The purpose of Nimrod's kingdom, to offer instructive control over his servants, through confusing and mixing of Yahweh's ways into new ways, dictated by a new deity called Anu, because it's a new way, so why not, which spawned multiple wide paths through the creation of the deities that followed. The Babylon of today. So what is Babylon today? The purpose of Nimrod's kingdom to offer instructive control over his servants through confusing and mixing of Yahuwah's ways into new ways dictated by a new deity called Anu, which spawned multiple wide paths through the creation of the deities that followed, from 119 Ministries video. The Greeks and Romans renamed their pagan temples and statues to names of New Covenant Bible authors and characters such as Mary, Venus, or Ishtar, Baby Jesus, Tammuz, Peter, Jupiter, and the other saints, and the Sacred Heart that was originally used by Tammuz and Ishtar, Samaramus to offer instructive control over the citizens, subjects, and slaves of Rome and Greece. 
because that is what the word citizen in Rome and in the United States means, is it means a subject and slave. Through confusing and mixing of Yahuwah's ways into new ways, dictated by Constantine as the Pontiff Maximus that changed the plan and the path of salvation from salvation by faith in Yusha Mashiach to salvation by confession to a priest, bishop, or pope, and works while abolishing the biblical laws and instituting the doctrines and commandments of men. And if you remember right, when we quoted Constantine before, he said that he had a new way. What is the difference between the Temple of Baal and its images, images in the church, and the star over the Christmas tree? There's no difference. In fact, people that worship these deities, they make all their decorations. They've got the graven images of Jesus, the statues of him as Tammuz. They've got all these statues. They've got statues of Mary that do not go to the Catholic Church. They do not go to the Christian Church. These people are pagans out through and through. They'll tell you they're pagan. And they have all the same things people have in their homes and in the churches. And they look the same. Glass Christmas tree decoration balls from the Restoration Study Bible 4th edition. Isaiah chapter 3, 18. Callus shaw beast means small glass neck ornament. Round like the moon can be crescent shaped. Worship of the moon deity. In Isaiah 3, 18, it says, In that day, Yahuwah will take away the bravery of her tinkling ornaments about their feet and their cowls and their round tires like the moon. Islamic people have been destroying Christian and Catholic churches with pagan images. 69 churches were burnt by the Islamic people in 2015. And we have some articles on this that I might pause this slideshow and show you really quick. So let's pause the slideshow. So CBN reports Muslims burn 69 churches and the Christians forgive. Why did they destroy the 69 churches? Because they had pagan images. They had pagan symbols in them. They recognized them as pagan. Then same year, they destroyed the pagan temples. Here's another one about them burning the 69 churches. ISIS destroys Temple of Baal in Palmyra, Syria, UN reports. When we read in the Bible, as we're going to be reading later, you'll see why. You'll see why they were empowered by Yahuwah to go over there and do this and have no repercussions. That's what the Bible says, okay? An ancient temple in Palmyra is destroyed, again, by ISIS. Another ancient pagan temple destroyed, same year. So that makes at least 71 uh, religious pagan structures destroyed by ISIS. And then, of course, they decided to rebuild the Arch of Baal after the ISIS destroyed the temple. And uh, Christians not so sure about this one, huh? About rebuilding the Temple of Baal. In several cities. Station here is my website where I gave prophecies of destruction that came forth in 2015. It's mindblaming.com forward slash prophecy.html. These destructions came forth the same year as a result of all the wickedness and evil that Washington State was doing and possibly the surrounding areas because they also had a taste of some of this wrath. And you can go back and check that out. It had to do with all kinds of perverse and evil things that were going on, letting women and children get raped and children get molested and drugs and all kinds of terrible things, and and you might think it's over with. You might think, well, that's not going to happen anymore today. But look at the news. There are more attacks going on on Christmas and Christmas celebrations, Christmas uh, parades, you know, all over the world. People want to celebrate paganism, and they think that there's no... In the same year, the 69 Christian churches were destroyed, 2015, the year after the sabbatical year, that people ignored the year of Yahuwah, wrath and judgment on Washington State. Why would uh, you uh, allow or cause the Islamic people to destroy 69 churches in Temple Baal in the same year of Yahuwah's wrath in Washington State? Because Yahuwah is the same yesterday, today, and forever, and Yahuwah takes this pagan image and ritual thing a lot more seriously than Christians do. Even the Islamic people take it more seriously than Christians do. Some people, they might want to try to say, that he's changed, that he's grown, that Yahuwah has, has grown, that he's changed, that he's not the same yesterday, today, and forever. 
I've heard really weird non-biblical theologies and explanations, even from pastors, trying to say that he doesn't really know the future, that he doesn't know the end from the beginning. He isn't the first and last. They, they're they lowering him to the status of these imaginary pagan deities because the imaginary pagan deities, that's the way they're described. You never know what they're going to do. They don't know what they're going to do, you know. The media, the governments say that the destruction of the temple of Baal, the jewel in the crown of serious history, was terrorism, war crime. It's terrible. ISIS also destroyed a temple of Balsamine, Balsamine in uh, Palmyra just before destroying the temple of Baal the same year. Why? Why do people... I, it's like if you cross the street, okay, you cross the street, they tell you to look both ways when you cross the street so you don't get hit by a car. And you say, oh, I don't need to do that. I cross the street all the time. People cross the street all the time, don't look, and nothing ever happens. And then people start getting hit by cars. And, and bad things happen. There's, there, there's consequences because people aren't looking both ways before they cross the street. People continue to say, we don't need to do that. We're not under the law of looking both ways before we cross the street. We're under grace. And we, even though we've been told, even though we've been taught and we know better now, we, we don't need to do it, you know? And that's, that's the way it is with the Bible and with this judgment. Oh no, the ju judgments come. No, that can't be, that can't be from Yahuwah. That can't be from Yahuwah. It can't. No, it, it's got to be it's just part of life. It's just things just happen. You know, it's uh, somebody else's fault. Deuteronomy 12, 1 through 4. These are the statutes and judgments which ye shall observe and do in the land, which Yahuwah Elohim of thy fathers giveth thee to possess it all the days that ye live upon the earth. Ye shall utterly destroy all the places wherein the nations which ye shall possess serve their own Elohim, upon the high mountains and upon the hills, under every green tree, and ye shall overthrow their altars and break their pillars and burn their groves with fire, and ye shall hew down the graven images of their Elohim and destroy the names of them out of that place. Ye shall not do so unto Yahuwah your Elohim. Ye can't worship him as the pagans do, okay? And that's what it says in the NIV. You must not worship Yahuwah, your El, in their way, okay? You can't do that. You got to worship him only in spirit and truth the way he says to do it. And this is why he stirs up the hearts of the Islamic people to go and destroy these things because the Christians won't do it. Maybe even the Jews won't do it. The Catholic Church won't do it. The, the, the countries they're in won't do it. So he stirs up these Islamic people and they get away with it because this is what the scripture says is that they will get away with it. John chapter 4 verses 22 through 24. Ye worship, ye know not what. We know what we worship for salvation is of the Jews. But the hour cometh and now is when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him Elohim is spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Here's Isaiah. Sounds like he's talking about Christmas time. Woe unto them that draw iniquity with cords of vanity, and sin as it were with a cart rope, that say, let him make speed and hasten his work. It's time to get ready for Christmas. We gotta go out, we gotta hasten our work, we gotta make speed, we gotta go out and get presents, we gotta put up the Tammuz tree, we gotta get everything together, we gotta hurry up, we're gonna spend lots of money so we can worship Jesus, so we can worship his birth, so we can worship Yahweh, Yahweh, Yeshua, Mashiach, we're, we're gonna make speed, we're gonna invest lots of money and time, and, and we gotta do this, we gotta do this now, it's the popular thing to do, it's the right thing, we gotta do this. That's what I believe this is talking about here. Let him make speed and hasten his work that we may see it, and let the counsel of the Holy One of Israel, Israel, draw nigh and come, that we may know it. Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil, because they're calling Christmas good, and they're calling the good things which is following the biblical feast evil. They're saying we can't do that anymore, because they're not under the Bible. That put darkness for light and light for darkness, that put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Woe unto them that are wise in their own eyes, like Constantine, and prudent in their own sight. Woe unto them that are mighty to drink wine, Men of strength to mingle strong drink, which justify the wicked for reward, and take away the righteousness of the righteous from him. Therefore, as the fire devoureth the stubble, and the flame consumeth the chaff, so their root shall be as rottenness, and their blossom shall go up as dust, because they have cast away the law of Yahuwah of hosts, and despised the word of the Holy One of Israel. Therefore is the anger of Yahuwah kindled, against his people, and he has stretched forth his hand against them, 
and has smitten them. And the hills did tremble, and their carcasses were torn in the midst of the streets. For all this his anger is not turned away, but his hand is stretched out still. And he will lift up an ensign, a prophet. Somebody's going to speak to you, a wise man, somebody who knows the truth. Somebody who might be making this video for you, or the person helped me work on the presentation. You're gonna, someone's going to warn you. They're going to tell you. They're trying to save you, okay? And he's raising up an ensign to the nations from afar, and will hiss unto them from the end of the earth. And behold, they shall come with speed swiftly. None shall be weary nor stumble among them. This is the Islamic people that we're talking about right now. The people that went and destroyed those temples. How could they get away with it? Here's why. They shall come with speed swiftly. None shall be weary nor stumble among them. None shall slumber nor sleep. Neither shall the girdle of their loins be loosed, nor the latchet of their shoes be broken, whose arrows are sharp and all their bows bent. Their horses' hoofs shall be counted like flint, and their wheels like a whirlwind. Their roaring shall be like a lion. They shall roar like young lions. Ye, they shall roar and lay hold of the prey, and shall carry it away safe, and none shall deliver it. And in that day they shall roar against them, like the roaring of the sea. And if one look unto the land, behold darkness and sorrow, and the light is darkened in the heavens thereof. So this is telling you they're going to carry away the prey. They're going to come in and Whatever they're taking, whatever they're destroying, they're going to carry it away. They're going to destroy the wicked thing, okay? They're going to get away safe. And none's going to deliver it out of their hand. And in that day they shall roar against them like roaring of the sea. They're not going to stumble. They're not going to fall. They're not going to trip. And nobody's going to be able to stop them. Nobody's going to come against them for what they've done. And that's what happened in 2015 when the Islamic people destroyed the pagan temples and the 69 pagan churches, which were pagan temples. Isaiah chapter 66, Good News Translation, starting in verses 17 and ending in verse 19. Yahuwah says the end is near for those who purify themselves for pagan worship, who go in procession to sacred gardens, and who eat pork and mice and other disgusting foods. I know their thoughts and their deeds. I am coming to gather the people of all the nations. When they come together, they will see what my power can do and will know that I am the one who punishes them. But I will spare some of them and send them to the nations and the distant lands that have not heard of my fame or seen my greatness and power to Spain, Libya, and Lydia with its skilled bowmen and to Tubal and Greece. Among these nations they will proclaim my greatness. Nahum chapter 1 verses 14 in the NIV. Yahuwah has given a command concerning you, Nineveh. You will have no descendants to bear your name. I will destroy the carved images and cast idols that are in the temple of your Elohim. I will prepare your grave, for you are vile. Jeremiah 16:19. Yahuwah, my strength and my fortress and my refuge in the day of affliction, the Gentiles shall come unto thee from the ends of the earth and shall say, Surely our fathers have inherited lies, Vanity and things wherein there is no profit. Okay? The Gentiles say, we inherited lives from our fathers. That's what Christmas is. That's what Halloween is. That's what this whole secular Gregorian thing is. All the paganism. It's the lies we've inherited from our fathers, whether they knew better or not. Nimrod is appropriately the first emperor to subtly strengthen the living with confusion and mixing by 119 Ministries. Of course, they're the ones who talked about that. Changing of the narrow path of Yahuwah into multiple wide paths of multiple false Elohim. Are words enough to get people to repent? Proverbs 29, 18-19 Where there is no vision, the people perish. But he that keepeth the law, happy is he. A servant will not be corrected by words, for though he understand, he will not answer. And I have heard people that know the truth of this and know the truth of the Bible, and they will not be corrected by words. Instead, they found themselves on fallacies. They found themselves on things made up by men or misinterpretations of the Bible that they know are false. They stand on books outside the Bible, outside the truth, and that's where they lay their foundation for destruction. It's the foundation of sinking sand that Yusha Mashiach talks about in the Gospels. That's what they found themselves on is sinking sand rather than the truth. Will those who have not seen Yahuwah's correction repent or do evil? Well, Judges 2, 10 through 16, And also all that generation were gathered up unto their fathers, 
And there arose another generation after them which knoweth not Yahuwah, nor yet the works which he had done for Israel. For Israel. And the children of Israel did evil in the sight of Yahuwah, and served Balaam, and which is Christmas. Okay, that's Christmas is serving Balaam. And they forsook Yahuwah, Elohim, of their fathers, which brought them out of the land of Egypt, and followed other Elohim of the Elohim of the people that were round about them. So you come to America, you do things the American way. You serve the the pagan deities that the church follows after. It's, it's just what happens. And bowed themselves unto them, and provoked Yahuwah to anger. And they forsook Yahuwah, and served Baal and Ashtoreth. And the anger of Yahuwah was hot against Israel, and he delivered them into the hands of the spoilers that spoiled them, and he sold them into the hands of their enemies round about, so that they could not any longer stand before their enemies, whatsoever they went out. And the hand of Yahuwah was against them for evil, as Yahuwah had said, and as Yahuwah had sworn unto them, and they were greatly distressed. Nevertheless, Yahuwah raised up judges, which delivered them out of the hand of those that spoiled them. Did the early persecuted church keep the Torah? Acts 21, 18 through 20. And the day following, Paul went in with us into James, and all the elders were present. And when he had saluted them, he declared particularly what things Yahuwah had wrought among the Gentiles by his, Paul's ministry. And when they heard it, they glorified Yahuwah and said unto him, Thou seest, brother, how many thousands of Jews there are which believe, and they're all zealous of the law. You can learn more about the law and the early church keeping it and the Bible telling us we need to keep it at BibleCourts.com. Even the New Covenant Scriptures, the Gospels, tell us to keep the law and that the lawless are going to hell. Those who choose the path of lawlessness and iniquity who do great miracles, signs and wonders and miracles, they got a Holy Spirit revival going. This is what the Gospel says, apart from me, those who practice lawlessness. I never knew you. So we need to make sure that we're following the whole word of Yahweh and not just part of it. Okay, we need to follow every word that proceeds out of the mouth of Yahuwah. Did the early persecuted church keep Torah? John 12, verses 20 through 23. And there were certain Greeks among them that came up to worship at the feast. The same came therefore to Philip, which was of Bethsidia of Galilee, and desired him, saying, Sir, we would see Yahushua. Philip cometh and telleth Andrew. And again Andrew said, Philip, tell Yahushua. And Yahushua answered them, saying, The hour is come, that the Son of Man should be glorified. And if you read more around there, well, you're going to read that the religious leaders said, Everyone's following after him. Not just the Greeks. Everyone's following after him and going to these feasts. Did the early persecuted church keep Torah? Acts 6, 9-15. Then there was certain of the synagogue, which is called the synagogue of Libertines and Cyrenians and Alexandrians, and of them Silica and of Asia disputing with Stephen, and they were not able to resist the wisdom and the spirit by which he spake. Then they suburned men, which said, We have heard him speak, blasphemous words against Moshe and Elohim. And they stirred up people and the elders and the scribes and came upon him and caught him and besought him to the council and set up false witnesses, which said, This man ceaseth not to speak blasphemous words against the holy place and the law. For we have heard him say that this Yoshua of Nazareth shall destroy this place and shall change the customs which Moses delivered to us, so that's the law, and all that sat in the council, looking steadfastly on him, saw his face as it had been the face of an angel. So these are the false witnesses say that they got rid of the law, that the law was abolished. Okay, that's in Acts. They say that Yeshua, HaMashiach, and Stephen spoke against the law, that they got rid of the law somehow. And that's the false witnesses that say that. Did the early persecuted church keep the Torah? Romans 3.31 do we then make void the law through faith? By no means ye, we establish the law. Did the early persecuted church keep the Torah? Romans 8, 7 through 10. For if that first covenant had been faultless, then should no place have been sought for the second, for finding fault with them. 
He saith, Behold, the days come, saith Yahuwah, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Judah. 9. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt, because they continued not in my covenant, as I regard them not, saith Yahuwah. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, saith Yahweh. I will put my laws into their mind and write them in their hearts, and I will be to them Elohim, and they shall be to me a people. Now Paul says this twice in Romans, and also I believe in chapter 10, Romans chapter 10, and the prophets say this twice in the Bible as well. So where do we lose it? Where do we not see it? Did the early persecuted church keep the Torah? Second Peter chapter 3, 15 through 18, an account that the long suffering of our master is salvation, even as our beloved brother Paul also, according to the wisdom given unto him, hath written unto you, as also in his epistles, all of his books, speaking in them of these things, in which are some things hard to be understood. Paul's writings, even back then when they could read them, were hard to be understood, which they that are unlearned and unstable rest. So they rest on things that are hard to understand, as they do also the other scriptures unto their own destruction. So you can do this with all the scriptures. Ye therefore, beloved, seeing ye know these things before, beware, lest ye also being led away with the error of the wicked, fall from your own steadfastness, or the error of the lawless. But grow in favor and in the knowledge of our Master and Savior, Yahushua the Messiah, Yahushua HaMashiach. To him be the glory, both now and forever. Amen. Did the early persecuted church keep the Torah? Matthew 4.4 4. But he answered and said, It is written, Men shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of Yahuwah. Did the early persecuted church keep the Torah? John 15.10, King James Version. If ye keep my commandments, ye shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandments, and abide in his love. John 14, 21. He that hath my commandments, and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me. And he that loveth me shall be loved of my Father, and I will love him, and will manifest myself to him. Acts seventeen thirty. And the times of this ignorance Yahuwah winked at, but now commandeth all men everywhere to repent. 1 John 3, 4. Whosoever commits sin transgresseth also the law, for sin is the transgression of the law. Matthew five seventeen through 20 Think not, and then they thought about it, right? They're not supposed to. Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law, till all be fulfilled. Whoever therefore shall break one of the least of the commandments, and shall teach men so, he shall be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whosoever shall do and teach them, and do and teach the law, the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I say unto you that except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees, ye shall in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven. Give a man a Bible without any other influence, and they may choose to do what the Bible says. Introduce that man to the Western Church, and they will learn a gospel of grace without law that leads to destruction. In Second Peter chapter three, Romans one, First John three four, and Matthew seven twenty three, and others talk about Matthew seven twenty three in the New King James Version. And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you, you who practice lawlessness. Obedience to the entire Bible makes other people angry. John three twenty for every one that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. That's what happens. If you if you come into the light of the law, then you know what your deeds are supposed to be, and it reproves you. And you don't like it, you get rid of it. You, you try to get out of your life, you persecute, you do everything you can. But Yahuwah is the one who enforces the law. He, he gives us the law, he enforces it. So no matter what you oppose or what you stand against, his law remains and will be enforced and is enforced today, yesterday, today, and forever. Romans 8, 7. Because the carnal mind is enmity against Yahuwah, for it is not subject to the law of Yahuwah, neither indeed can it be, because the carnal evil mind. John three sixteen. For Yahuwah so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, 
that whosoever believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Salvation prayer. I want to end this video with a salvation prayer. Please pray with me and receive salvation and repentance and righteousness, the Holy Spirit and baptism and all good things that your heavenly Father, Yahuwah Av, has for you through his son, Yusha Mashiach, and his death on the cross. He came and died for you and take your place so that the consequences of sinning would not be eternal. We wouldn't have to go to hell. That we could be saved by him and that we could receive righteousness from him, his righteousness. We'd be saved by grace and forgiveness and repentance and not by works, lest any man should boast, but by his sacrifice for us on the cross, by his grace to us, by his forgiveness, so that we can go to heaven, so that we have the power through the Ruach HaKadosh to learn and follow his instructions as he teaches us, and to be made into a new creature, a new creation, and follow him with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength, as he commands, as Yeshua Mashiach told us is the most important commandment. So let's do that, and to treat others the way that they're supposed to be treated, the way the Bible says to treat them, the way that we want to be treated. We thank you that you keep us from sin that results in destruction and that you have given us your instructions that we can receive life and live in life. And receive your blessings and avoid the curses and consequences of our sins. As the weed, King David, experienced the loss of a son despite his repentance because of the consequences of his sin against you, Bathsheba, her husband, and your holy people. We thank you that we can live with you forever and ever in heaven and receive all good things. It's unmerited. It's wonderful. We thank you for your blessings, your righteousness. There's nothing we can do to earn it or deserve it. We also thank you that you put an end to all the wickedness and wicked people in this world. However, we pray that they would turn from sin and follow you with their entire heart, soul, mind, and strength and being, that they would be saved. They'd turn and receive salvation and turn from all iniquity into all righteousness. We thank you that you set us free from the wicked ways of this world and systems of this world and of man and the governments and all these things and make us learn to be completely dependent upon you. We thank you for every way that you speak to us through your holy Bible, dreams, visions, wonders, signs, creation, other people, and in any way that does not contradict your holy word. We pray that all people would receive all these things and turn back to you with their entire being and that everyone would have salvation and walk in righteousness as Yahushua Mashiach walked and live as you lived and know the great joy that is found in learning, keeping, and teaching your instructions and having a personal relationship with you every day and every moment. We need you every moment, constantly. Without you, we can do nothing. But with you, we can do all things. Thy Ab, who is art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your Kadosh, 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 which means holy, holy, holy. Your Kadosh, Kadosh, Kadosh. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespass and our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. If you know anybody that should see this video, that would like to see this video, who should learn these things, who everybody should learn these things, please share this video with your friends and family to educate others. If you need to mail a copy of this presentation or other presentations on DVD, VHS, USB flash drive, or other media to someone, please contact me on the Torah Network or BibleQuotes.com and find a way to get a hold of me there. And we can try to put it on DVD or USB flash drive, micro SD card, an MP4 player, VHS tape, whatever media that you need it on so that people can see it. And we thank you for that. In Yeshua Mashiach's mighty name. Special thanks to Carla Light for her help with the research and the slide presentation. And special thanks to Ian Michaels for the music used in this presentation where it's available at ianmichaelsmusic.com. If this is being shown in a live broadcast on YouTube, I have not been able to get them to allow me to play the music without censorship. So... You may not hear it there. Here are the works cited. And the holy world is calling you. Come away. And unless otherwise noted, all the Bible verses were taken out of the restored name King James Bible, the modern Hebrew letters and words replaced with the ancient Hebrew letters for use of the Tetra 
Grammatin, or however they say that. We do not endorse the King James Version, and have become recently aware that the Textus Receptus was altered by anti-Torah people and does not match early manuscripts. It was altered, I believe, sometime around possibly 500 AD, and it doesn't match the earlier manuscripts. That's what I've been told. And we see it in the modern translations of the Bible, the NIV, the AS, and other modern translations. They come from earlier manuscripts, apparently, and they're not as anti-Torah. They're not as anti-law. If you want to test your Bible, go to Galatians 3.10. See if it says that Paul is cursed, because it says those who keep the law are cursed. If you go to the original manuscripts, the earlier manuscripts, they're going to tell you if you're cursed, if you're relying on the law for salvation, rather than relying on salvation through Yahushua HaMashiach. It doesn't say Paul's cursed. It doesn't say those who keep the law are cursed. It just says you can't rely on the law for salvation. My suggestion to you is to send a copy of this presentation to everyone that sends you a Christmas card. Get their address off the Christmas card email whatever they send you, or they send you Christmas greetings on Facebook, or happy birthday, whatever, send this presentation back to them. Why not? Two pants are placed upon the line of time. One leads home, one leads to a precipice. Some heed the warning and they make it just fine. Others laugh it off as they lose their lives. On my new wine To you who say you see But you are blind To you who say you're rich But you are poor To you who say you need For nothing more Forgive them Lord They don't know what they're as they tear your word apart So hear me now And hear what the Spirit's saying Healing is here for you If you can hear the knocking on your heart Swine they travel over every precious jewel. The shofar sounded from the watchman on the wall, and jeering laughter is the answer to the call. While the blood upon the altar still speaks mercy on us all. A woman wipes her mouth and says, I've done no wrong. Wisdom comes to her with healing in his arms In smug complacency she chooses to ignore Her sins are piled high and judgments at the door The shofar sounded from the watchman on the wall And jeering laughter is the answer to the call While the blood upon the altar Still speaks mercy on us all.
satisfied many days without a king and without a prince and without a sacrifice and without an image and without an ephod and without teraphim. Afterwards shall the children of Israel return and seek Yahuwah their Elohim and David their king and shall fear Yahuwah and his goodness in the latter days.
commands us not to borrow pagan worship ways to keep his festivals only. He wants us to be holy. Lord, we love you and will follow every word you say. But when it comes to breaking tradition, we won't obey. For the sake of our tradition, we skip a couple lines. For the sake of our tradition, Lord, we hope that you don't mind. For the sake of our tradition, oh, how we love the smell of pine. For the sake of our tradition, it's Christmas Show the 